Hi, I'm Jesse Walters with Charles Ruttenberg. I'm here today with Jill Jordan from Backbone Construction and Roofing. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, as always. Yeah. So we're talking about the real estate market, which is, uh, as we know, uh, going crazy, and um, which obviously has a lot to do with the building. Correct. And, you know, all that stuff, which is where Joel comes into. Uh, with construction. Yeah. And roofing. Yeah. Right now it's... It's pretty busy um, considering the price increase that's yeah. going on. So I tell people, I'm like, buy now. Because, yeah, <laughs> because, it keeps going up. I mean, I've had, in the last 30 days, we've had, um, like, I want to say three price increases yeah. on just our shingle brands. Yeah, it's so crazy. It's insane right now. Yeah, it is crazy. Yeah, so, um, you know, because the price increases, we see gas prices going up. And then we see prices at the grocery store going up, and then we see prices on the houses going up. And so, what do you expect, right? The house, the repairs, and the additions, it's, and it's the everything. And a, a lot of it is being driven by um, by the cost to transport yeah. because of the gas. So um, that is causing it's like a it's an effect. It's a ripple effect. Like yeah. everything is going up. And I and I I don't know if there's any end in sight. I right. just feel like this might just be the new normal that we yeah. have going on. Yeah, I talk to um, some people and they say, well, uh, you know, when the prices go up so much, people will stop buying. And I have not seen that. People have not, I mean, it hasn't affected them whatsoever. They, like on the, um, on the home improvements, I just see people saying, well, I'm getting, I'm refinancing at a really low rate. So if I'm paying more, it's almost the same thing, yeah. justifying the increases, you know? I mean, so. and it helps me because one of my goals, I mean, I'm not trying to pressure these people into buying a roof, but I'm just like, buy now. Yeah. And I'm not trying to, this is like a sales tax. I'm just saying, I'm honestly trying to save you money before it comes down to the wire because we had to, originally our prices were quoted for 30 days, like on our estimate, and we had to take it down to 10 days. Oh, wow. So it's like, this quote is good for 10 days, and I'll have to re-quote you. Yeah. <laughs> and I guarantee no you, pressure. it's yeah. going to be higher. <laughs> There's no pressure. Um, I mean, I do like to hit my sales goals for each month. Yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> But that is something that I use as a sales tactic. Right. So on mine, when I'm showing a house and stuff, I'll say, hey, it's no pressure, but bids are due tomorrow by 6 p.m. And um, if you have cash, it's even better. Yeah. You know, no pressure, They've though. Asked, but inspections yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, that's what we were talking about prior uh, to, you know, the, the video started shooting was the, the TikTok videos are so popular right now where the realtors are on there like, I want to waive all inspections. I got cash. I got fifty thousand over. I, you know, everything, and um, it's kind of it's crazy right now. And so that's great for you, right? I mean, yeah. this is supposed to be booming. Yeah. Um, if yeah, if uh, you have um, a, you know, like sellers, um, it's harder when you have buyers. But I have, you know, I am um, good at beat. I know it's, it sounds conceited, but good at beating everybody <laughs> out. I'd be, hey. Yeah. You gotta I got a plan. Home, no one else is going yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> toot, toot. So yeah. So. Um, Actually, we'll show a couple of the ones that uh, that I have list. You know, are newly listed right now, okay. um, and then under contract, um, it's one of those cue the houses. Okay, so this <laughs> this one I um, have under contract. Um, this one was listed for four seventy five. Um, it went way over. Had seven offers on it. That's in Spring Hill on two point three eight acres. Inspections are today, and we're closing Friday. So I think that one should be a done deal. Touchwood. And then um, we have a couple other ones. This one's on, by this one's in Tampa. It's a two-bedroom, two-bath. Um, it's in um, by over there by Bears, um, Jade, Paul, you know, Tampa. Yeah, Palms. Bruce B. Downs. I used to yeah. work at USAA. That's at 75. And yeah, down. yeah. Right. Oh, okay, so yeah, you could pretty much see it from that building. I think from right. there, that that complex. Yeah. So this one was a two-two. It was one uh, seventy-five. Went way over. Um, on asking too, and it's under contract. Um, this one is closing the 13th. Um, that one was way over too, and that was in Newport Ritchie. Um, and I didn't even have the professional photographer out there. It was so fast. Right. As you can see, the You're garage like, door is open. Here's my cell phone. Crooked. <laughs> yeah. It's all crooked. Yeah. Hey, it works. Yeah. So that one was a 3 2 a pool, and it went over, and that one's closing. And this little, this little bad boy right here was 150, went way over, and I had 32 offers on it. So. That was crazy. We had to crawl in the side of this home. Oh my God. Um, the homeless people were in there, and oh we no. had to, they, they got them all out, and then there was a, a four-foot hole in the side of it. 
Um, and we crawled through for the pictures. And the photographer I have would, you know, I told her I'm going to spare you on this one. I'll go out and take the pictures. Um, and then this one's under contract. I think I have one more, which is just a little teeny um, mobile home in the middle of no man's land. No, it's in the middle of a mobile, mobile home park in, uh, in Inverness. Um, and that one is a $99,000, you know, just like a little starter home right. and stuff. Um, that one, I want to say, yeah, ninety-nine-nine. Oh yeah, I got the the glamour shots on the on this one too. And it um, it's a cute little house. You know, if you're starting and you can't find anything for ninety-nine thousand right now, so that's pretty much this is what you get. And um, and green's back oh, I in. I love that carpet. Green's back in. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's back in. That oh house gosh. was full of. Yeah, everybody loves green. That was full Paint of money's um, green, so yeah, it's true. Make it rain in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like somebody already did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and in there too. Yeah, so that one uh, was full of antiques. I mean, this uh, was a state sale, and it was just full uh, to the point where I was wondering, you know, if there was uh, major antiques like that were worth more than the mobile home, you know? Correct. So she got it all cleaned out. Um, her grandpa had left it to her. You know, she's younger, and she's just trying to get the most, you know, start her life and school, pay for her school and stuff like that. But um, she, real, real nice seller, and um, the house turned out real good. If you would have seen her before pictures, it's just packed out. You couldn't even see the green carpet. Right. So are <laughs> yeah. you, do you find with those houses that your, like the one you said that sold, well, had like 32 beds on it and had mm -hmm. the um, homeless people, are the people that are buying those, are people that are just flipping those types of yeah. properties? Like those that 32 beds wasn't, those were all people looking to flip that. Property. Yeah, on the, so on the, that home needed the roof, needed an air conditioner, needed a, uh, you know, obviously appliances, um, needed kitchen, bathroom. So that was a pretty much a, a no, you know, if you're a realtor watching, that was a no contingency as far as, no, you know, all cash, so no loan contingency because right. you can't loan on it. Yeah. And then there was no inspection contingency because the ones that wanted the inspections, um, we decided not to go with them. Correct. You know, if it was, you know, like for a seller, it's easier to look and go, I'd rather have somebody that says no inspection. So we had zero inspection days, and they're just going to um, to flip it. Um, the one, the, those, the buyers on that that got greedy, in other words, um, the ones that, so you'll have an investor who will just take a, they'll give you an offer and they'll just, they'll check there's a box on the contract, it's called assignment, it's, and they're going to basically just sell that contract to someone else. And so the ones that we saw like that, um, we needed, like this is a guardianship, so we needed 60 days to close. And those, the ones that say, oh, I don't want to put any money down, I'm just going to flip this paper, they came in and it, I said, I need 60 days, and it's probably going to be sooner. And they, a lot of them wouldn't give me 60 days on it. So I'm like, well, we can't go with you. And, and basically, we don't want the assignability. We want you to, you get it. Now it's your deal. Property, right? Yeah, and then you can sell it. And um, a lot, so I think that, um, you know, some of the investors go to these classes to kind of uh, how to buy something with no money. And um, when they're doing stuff like this and you're competing against 32 offers, you've got to have the actual cash to Right. We're going to ask you for proof of funds. You can't just take the contract and sell it to someone else. Um, but on this, you know, the actual buyer that we got, they had proof of funds. You know, they were, they are, they're not a hedge fund, but they are investors, and they're going to um, fix up the property and flip it. So, um, and like you said, all of them, you know, there was probably two homeowners that called, and then when that, uh, the neighbors came over. I met the neighbors and stuff like that, right. and I told them they could crawl through the hole in the side of the house. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I had the best. It, yeah, you can't see the hole. There's a hole. There it is. See it? Oh, wow. Did you see it? Yeah. I mean, that was what it looked like inside. So this like a neighbor that, neighborhood that's being like gentrified, like the gentrification is going yeah, on? Yeah, a lot of the homes are really nice. Um, it's right by Lowry Park Zoo, so it's actually... Oh, this the, is in Tampa. Okay. Yeah, so they really um, have come on a lot on the houses and stuff in that area. Yeah, a lot of that area. I went to a person, actually the one of the um, women that I sold a my first roof to, um, but they were waiting for the house that they had being built in Seminole Heights to be completed. And that's why they called me out like months ago, like back when I started in August. And yeah. then their house kept getting delayed. It was supposed to be done in the summer. So they kept pushing back and pushing back. And now I'm just now putting the, the roof on oh the house gosh. in Plant City here coming up at the end of this month. 
Um, and I went to their new house because I had to get them to sign, um, like the NOCs and stuff right, for the right. permit. And uh, the new house, those houses that they're building are just phenomenal. Like there's a whole new like modern two story like right next to yeah, like 1960s. The bungalow style. Yeah, nineteen yeah. sixty. It's really pretty with um, the the remodels that they're doing. So yeah, I, that area. Um, they again they re redoing a lot of different areas where um, it was you know, maybe getting a little run down and now they're doing the beautification, you know? Right. I know a lot of the, some, you know, well, I can't speak for every downtown area, but I know a lot of the downtown areas will give grants for different beautification projects and stuff like that as far as, um, now this is two years ago, they would say like, oh, you're, like say for instance, downtown Newport Ritchie, they were giving a grant for like the roof. If the home, the property had to be homesteaded, so it couldn't be like an investment property. You had to be living there and they would help you with like different grants and stuff like that, you know. So they kind of, depending on which area you're in, if you're looking to do something, you can always call your local municipal and ask them if there's any type of you know, assistance and stuff like that, you know. Right. That's cool to know. Yeah, it, and it's on the older homes, too. You know, so don't go, do, I'm buying a brand new 20, I need a grant. And they're going to be like, no. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Sorry about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry about your bad luck. Yeah. So, but um, we, you know, on the roofing, the prices have gone up, like you said, like three times in 30, in the 30 days? Or yeah, in 30 days. Because wow. I, I was looking yesterday before I came, I was like, I wonder, I was like, let me go back. Because I actually had a client reach out to me and while I was on his roof um, mm -hmm. his neighbor came out she wanted me to do her roof so I quoted them like a month ago um, back at the end of February and then and at that time we were still doing the 10 days and then I had to requote him again because I think we had a price increase on like the 22nd of February then there was one on the um, the, uh, the second of March like, it was all like right back to back and then he even like we were texting he was like so wait when you first quoted me it was this and then now it's this and now it's going up again i'm like yes. yeah <laughs> i know and i feel bad too. i feel bad because you, you, okay so my comparison with the roof is um i sold someone i sold their house for them um this was six months ago it was 185 we had higher but we took the cash offer so right. it was like 185 or and uh so now it's for sale for 199 but i don't so it's an older lady, so, and I was thinking about it, and I'm like, a lot of people, you'll see a house for sale, like I saw one the other day, too, it was like 165, now it's for sale for 225, and they didn't do anything to it. Um, right. But, like, I think as, I think as a uneducated consumer, you go, oh, I bought this house for 175, I'm going to sell it for 200, I'm going to make, in your head, and on paper, it looks like you're going to make $25,000, but then you're going to have this thing called closing costs and commissions that you're going to have to pay. So then at the end of it, you're going to make, you're still going to make some money, but it's taxable because you didn't live there for two years. So you, then you got, now you got to pay 10% or 20% on. So you, so for me, I sold her this house for 175. She's selling it for 200, 200. It, you're going to pay about 12,000 in, in commissions and uh, closing costs on your 200. Right. So now back it up. You're at like 188, and then you're going to have to pay 10% on the between the 175 and the 188. You got about $13,000 profit, and now you're going to have to pay about 1300. Well, so, so what would be the point? <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay. And then all that moving, and she because she literally moved in there and stuff too. So her goal was to move in and just sell it. I don't know. I have no idea. But her, she sold it. And she will end up making probably about five grand by the time she's done. So did she know uh, about the two-year rule prior to? No, I, I don't think I didn't, so. I've never heard yeah. about that either. So, so it's tax. So if you um, live in it, so if you're purchasing a home in, in the state of Florida and you live in it for two years, all the profit is tax-free. But you have to live in it. You can't rent it out. You have to live in it. Okay. So if you live in it and then you go, oh, I think I'll rent it out for a year, it takes off that you know, unless it's some, you know, family. So live in it, like, what do they mean by that? Like, is it actually Home you setting. or, like, family members or something like that? If you're not actually renting it, like, say someone's just, like, living, yeah, like, so, occupying I mean, space. Yeah, so, I mean, that would be. how do they prove that or find that out? Usually it's because you homestead exempt it to, you know, your driver's license matches your homestead. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So then you, that's a clear path. But if you, say you never, you're just, you, you say you were a lazy person and you were like, oh, I, I forgot every year to homestead it. Right. As long as you had, like, your mail going there and like stuff. you could prove that there yeah. was you lived you, you lived there you had the electric on a year right. just something 
something. So if you ever yeah. did get audited. So this is how you do it, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> put your, put your name <laughs> everywhere and then live somewhere yeah. else. But again, yeah. that would only work if you only had one other property yeah. to sell. Obviously, if you're in this. Yeah, you're so if you're an more. investor, yeah, right. and you've got like 10 properties and you're like, yeah, I lived in it. And then, yeah. So I'm sure the investors is a totally different aspect of how the selling of the homes go. They have a totally different path than just a regular homeowner, correct? Right, yeah. So you have your, you know, obviously it's, start, it's starting from day one as an investor with how how you're deeding your property. Maybe it's just in your name, like you said, maybe you won't be able to tell, but then your insurance is different too because you have homeowner's insurance if you're living in the home, you have dwelling insurance if you're renting the home. Like so, a fire policy. Yeah, right. exactly. So then you're, so you're there and it, yeah, you know that stuff. You're like, that's the old job. We got <laughs> we, that. We told you that. I love this. <laughs> Professional. So that's kind of like the so you know it's a you know it's tenant occupied then as soon as you see that dwelling policy and then it and then um you kind of goes from there but the most uh, investors are going to pay so say you say the same scenario say you bought you know like that one house it was like 150 and they're selling for 225 you figure 75 thousand dollars profit but then you got closing costs right. back it up and then it's not the 225 you're paying taxes on it's the gap between the 225 minus 150 paying taxes on 75,000 and then depending on what tax bracket you're in it's either going to be 10% or 20% you know you have to call your accountant and ask them but you'll take out for repairs but if you just bought it and, and was like oh this market's crazy I'll just hold it for three months throw it back out then you're going to pay tax you right. know some pretty good and taxes so you're saying the tax is based on the amount that you're going to receive as the profit yeah, the, the, so you, the taxes, so each person is in their own tax bracket. Correct. So it's, you're going to pay, you're going to pay taxes on that $75,000 profit, um, depending what tax bracket you're in. Right. And that's where you got to call your accountant and say, okay, I make, like where am I at, right? <laughs> yeah, I make this much money this year approximately, and I'm going to sell this house. And then, cause sometimes, uh, you know, if, when it gets to be like that small profit and you, and you got to pay 20%, you know, you figure, is it worth it at the end, or should I just right. rent it out and take now, it is slow? It based on that year of your profit, yeah. or do they do an accumulation of, like, say, like, for me, when I was independent, I was paid as a contractor, so my fluctuation in salary changed every single year. So they're basing it on that on moment that year. right now? Yeah, so, okay. okay, so say you bought, so you're selling this house that you never lived in right now, this moment in 2022, it would be um, at the end of the year. Were? Yeah, oh, at, the at the end, end of, of this year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, at the end of the year, um, you would say, "Here's my, um, here's my all here's the money. Little, little yeah. amount of money. Here's all the money. I, <laughs> here's all the money I, I made, Help and then me, poor. and then it'd be like, and here's the house I sold. <laughs> yeah. Right. So then they come, they put it all together, and then, and then that's your total income for the whole year, and then you, they tax you on that whole thing. So so if you're on the edge of a 10% tax bracket and a 20% tax bracket, it can kind of throw you over. So that's why we say, you know, call your accountant and right. stuff. So do you know, like, for me, like, when I said I was independent, are we doing to get a commercial? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Everybody stay tuned. Welcome back. I'm Jesse Walters with Charles Ruttenberg, and Joel Jordan is here today with Backbone Construction and Roofing. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, as always. <laughs> yeah, so we, um, we're talking about just the market and different things going up. And, um, uh, you know, before we get started back, I wanted to special thanks to Nightberry Title Services, my, one of my sponsors. Um, they're great. Cheryl there, help you with any type of title questions you have. Um, you're trying to make sure you're purchasing something and you want to make sure there's no liens or encumbrances against it. Cheryl's your girl. 
And also thanks to the mortgage firm, Dylan and Gaston. She's awesome to get you approved for any type of new future um, mortgages and stuff. And they both have really easy, um, like it shows apply now, client log on. Um, just automated systems, so you don't even, if you're not a people person, you don't even have to talk to anybody and get you approved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't talk to anybody these days. Yeah, <laughs> I know. They're like, there's someone at the door. It used to be like a normal thing, you know? That's why I stay away from door knocking, because you just don't know. Yeah. You know, a, lot of, uh, a lot of our sales come driven from social media. Yeah. Uh, especially with like Facebook and like word of mouth. But going back to what I was asking before, so when it comes like the, um, find out like if you're independent, like getting paid um, as a contractor, so with your income fluctuating, like when it comes to a mortgage, like they just collectively look at that to determine? Oh, yeah, if you're going to get a more Okay, so it's two. They like to see you at a job for two years usually, um, even if you're like subcontracting or whatever, to have those tax returns pretty much steady for two years and, show, and showing an increase for the second year, you know. So if you're, um, so I have a friend who, and she'll love me, it's her birthday today actually, but um, oh. happy birthday, Stacy. Happy Stacey. birthday, Stacy. She, and she's not going to watch it. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, never Sorry. mind. You <laughs> should be supporting your friend. <laughs> yeah, I know. Where are you at? But she's a waitress and she will not report her income. And I, I won't put her last name on here, so the IRS will go after her. But anyway, so <laughs> I'm like, you want to buy a call out podcast yeah. now? <laughs> you want to, you want a house? You got to report the income for two years. Okay. You know. So, um, but she won't do it, and I'm like, she's like, why don't you help me get a house? I'm like, and she has excellent credit, and it doesn't right. go, it goes by, it's a, you know, that com conglomeration of your credit, your income, you know what I mean, and and your good paying, you know, right. and then your history of your rentals or mortgage, you know, if you already have a mortgage and stuff too. Right. So yeah, like for me, like I think, like I have my own company that I'm paid through as an independent, so I think that will be the track record that they'll oh, yes. basically use yeah. for uh, my mortgage when I when I decide to buy. <laughs> I, I keep being like, oh, I'm gonna wait. And I keep waiting. You're like, like the bottom. The bottom is gonna fall out. Oh, okay, not this month. Yeah. Well, even before, like I, <laughs> I just had such a, like an aspiration of just constantly traveling. Like I didn't want to, um, like stay planted. And now that I'm kind of back, yeah, with my family, like in my roots, it's like okay, I feel like I need to settle down. And now I'm like, okay, I want to buy. And I, yeah. of course, it's the yeah, worst time to buy. Worst time, worst time to well, buy. Well, interest rates are still so. low, so I explain it kind of like what the the prices were lower, but the interest rates were higher. Correct. Now prices are higher and the interest rates are lower, so it's kind of like the same payment, you know. Right. But um, you know, where there's actually uh, still good deals where you're based out of Plant City, the um, there's still pretty good deals in Plant City. Um, there's some, you know, there's I'm actually having hook up. There's some uh, new construction in Plant City that's actually pretty reasonable. Uh, and there's like there's still actually good deals. In Zephyr Hills, there's still pretty good deals. Yeah, I mean, if you know um, anything in Plant City, or you know, because that's definitely. I where know a realtor. I that <laughs> could help you out. <laughs> so yeah, no, I just I think that's kind of where I'll end up. I mean, Backbone is based in Plant City, and that's kind of. But my family is based in Plant City also. So yeah. Um, and now that I'm having to drive, because we've uh, got our own office now. I think before when I was here, we were kind of like sharing a space. Um, inside of my sister's like office, but then she okay. got a whole new facility because her print shop has like taken off for her, so she That's was awesome. able to get this um, this really big sec uh, section of this building. And because of construction, we came in and like put some walls up and like yeah. separate everything out. So now we have like our own space. We're not like in her space. And so with that, um, just to kind of go into a little bit of the re, um, re um, structure restructure yeah. of the yeah. company. Is um, so my um, sister is basically taking a step down from the office manager and role, and she's just going to stay on as strictly marketing um, because the print shop is doing so well. Um, That's awesome. Which is called Bonnie Day Design. So she's kind of been toggling with it for some time because you know your business is like thriving. Obviously, we're thriving too. So Backbone is getting um, is getting bigger. We're getting we're reaching out to more counties. So, right. Um, but I know for her, it was like a really difficult decision to step down because she loves um, yeah. us. You know, she loves the yeah, company. Of course, She's been with right? Backbone for years, you know. <laughs> yeah. But staying on as like our social media and like marketing is like yes. her niche, you know, along with yeah. like her print shop. So she's still with the Backbone family. So right now we're currently looking for an office manager um, to come on. So we've been doing some interviews the last week. Oh, so that's good. So anybody watching is 
locally office manager in, in plant city material yeah and it would be like a nine to five monday through friday like you would have to come to the office i'm sure you could be remote in some capacity be a hybrid but it, you do a lot of basically like scheduling permitting a lot of the office managerial yeah. stuff and with the restructuring i've become the district sales manager congratulations thank you <laughs> you need like the tag yeah. you know you need, like a, um, a confetti to fall from the yeah <laughs> should i say it again no i'm yeah. kidding we don't have it right <laughs> we don't have it like that here but you know go off so uh <laughs> so, um and then we're um we've hired another uh, salesperson and we're looking to hire more salespeople. so um again if you're looking for getting into um, construction or roofing sales or if you want to inquire about being an office manager just send me your resume to my email it's going to be joel at backbonefl.com and or you can also go to our website and put an inquiry in, in. in oh there. okay oh that's good to know oh so also with the website now that he's on there so last time i was here we talked about the financing right and we were like trying to figure that out so now Right now, if you click on the financing tab on our website, we offer financing through Synchrony. Oh, that's awesome. So Yeah, and Synchrony is a good bank because I deal with some of the banks and I can't, some of the big ones I don't like to plug because they are, um, they're not consistent, you know what I mean? Um, so Synchrony is actually a good one, so that's good to know. Yeah, because I have, a, I think I have a CARE credit card with Synchrony and I also have um, my Ashley furniture card with <laughs> Synchrony. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, yeah, they, um, as far as, I mean, I know they offer like multiple levels of financing with interest rates, you know, like with certain months, interest yeah. rate, things like that. So um, you just want to check out the financing tab. And now right. we did have a whole new photo shoot taken of us and the guys, but unfortunately we didn't have it in time because I wanted to like have the, the website yeah. the new photos. But once we get them, we'll update we can the come website. Back again. And then also... If I come back again, I'll obviously bring the new office manager. I was like, one of the requirements of working here is that you have to want to go on, yeah. and promote, go to, <laughs> go to this type of um, interviews, or, you know, to, because we're part of the chambers, you know, yeah. commerce going and speaking at those, you know, I need someone who's Yeah, personal, start to get, you know, like, relaxed in front of people right, and stuff like that, yeah. Them working directly with me, like, as the sales manager and the office manager, like, we are going to basically, they'll be the inside and I'll be doing the outside, but I want us to collaborate together, especially when it comes to like the permitting process. Because I don't know if you've ever done anything with permitting. I'm just getting into that. So. I um I help Joe with all his permitting. <laughs> I do. Yeah. So <laughs> I sell houses, but then when on my day, well, I'll have a couple hours off, and it's uh, so I'm like, if you need any help, I'm I actually kind of am a professional on that. <laughs> well, yeah. it's, it's just interesting to learn that like depending on the city. Um, yeah. Some of them require you to like call call in certain like in progress. Some you can do it online. Yeah, just like every county, every like different levels of inspection. Yeah, like some will just um, drive by and do the inspection. Some like we were doing one I think in Zephyr Hills, and we had to like go out and put like the placard like on the door. Yeah, and, like, have to sign it and get it back. So it's just like different things in Hillsborough we, County versus like Pasco County. We put the placard on everything and the plans on everything and the yeah, which building permit placard. And then we have the plans too, which have to be 11 by 17 printout on it, each one. So it's like particular. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's yeah. like, I'm, I'm getting into learning that side of it um, just because not necessarily that I would be the one in control of that. I just like to understand everyone's role and responsibility, right. especially being in management. That way I can, you know, figure out where we can thrive, where we can collaborate and, you know, smooth chip. I love being proactive. Yeah, that's good. I'm not good. a reactive person. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I want to be on top of things. I want to be ready for, you know, because yeah. we're looking into trying to get into doing claims with, um, doing claims, um, insurance. Claims. Oh, okay. So there's a company that I'm speaking with right now that, that works as a vendor, basically the in-between, um, an insurance carrier. So we'll ask like, Hey, we need a roofer. This vendor and will refer us right. to go out to do the estimate, which is what I, which is perfect for me because this becomes like the, the perfect hybrid between the 17 year, yeah, you know, insurance, insurance career industry. that I have, right. plus this construction career that I'm going into. So right. I think it's a great migration for me. So I'm really excited about getting um, those set up, those getting those networks together, mm -hmm. and just be able to uh, acquire more referrals and more sales that way. Yeah, that's good because well, you know, like it's smart to, you know, to be that kind of like the boss in charge that 
you know, is not just bossing you around, but knows every level of right. that, you know, you know, like as far as permitting and stuff like that, the, cause I think you just see the structures going up and stuff. And if you don't know exactly, you know, is it a primary structure, or accessory structure, or is it, which do I need plans? Do they have to be sealed off? Are they con contractor signed? Are they, you right. know, all that stuff that is, is stuff that people watching are probably like, what are they even talking about? But, right. but it's to know that whole industry, you know, it's smart, you know? Yeah. So like one thing I'm learning is like, I've just, um, I've had a couple, I've, I did a, um, a large sale for an addition. Mm -hmm. So I know that that's going to require all types of permitting. So I'm again, it's just interesting to see the process and go through it. Cause I haven't with additions, I've gone through it with roofs, right. but I haven't done, like, I know some of them do like the roof mitigation forms and yeah. then they can do the final inspection. But like I said, like with city of plan city, like you would have to call in it in progress. Yeah. They're gonna physically go out and see the work right. in progress. But if you're um, unincorporated, then they're like, yeah. we'll just drive by. The yeah, it's the same thing with Hillsborough and City, city right. of Tampa. They're totally different entities. Yeah. And you're, and then too, the different people you talk to there and stuff like they're, it's, it is strange that, but with, I just find that take pictures just in case, because literally they are your case. If you, right. if you are at the wrong municipality and you, like call it in and, and they you, you forgot one stage, at least if you have pictures or have your guys take, snap a couple of pictures. Right. Of, you know, um, the funny thing is like trying to find, um, like if you're looking in the right county, cause yeah. you're like that, you're, yeah. cause you know how the lines have changed, especially yeah. with like Odessa and like that whole area got like rezoned. Yeah. So like I know in that- my own, uh, Pasco, Odessa or Hillsborough, Odessa. Yeah. So you know what I do um, is kind of a hint, like so for me, I check permitting because, so say you're selling your house and I need to know what year your roof is. That's what I check permitting for in my right. job. But in my husband's if they job, got a permit. yeah, <laughs> you better got a permit. So, but it, in my husband's job, his is, um, uh, you know, for the usually pool enclosures. So, um, so we'll have a pool going in. So I'll pull the permit to make sure there's a pool because otherwise, if I just submit a con, like a, I mean a permit, um, they'll say, you know, where's the pool? This, so I have to make sure the pool's pulled prior. And then we'll put the right. cage in after. But um, going back to the, you know, like the, is it primary, you know, structure? Is it permitting? Is it, you know, um, after you do them a couple times, you'll know. But um, so if it's in Odessa, literally, you can see, you go to Pasco County, it doesn't come up, then you know it's Hillsborough County. But City of Tampa and Hillsborough um, and Pinellas and City of Pine and Largo and Bel Air, and there's like a whole group of them that are um, like a, uh, it's really hard to figure out which municipality it is. Um, and what I do is I go to their tax bill and I look at their, so it says it on there, it'll say incorporated or right. corp, like where are they paying taxes to? And that's how I find it. So so I'll find the, the property appraiser and it'll say tax. So I'll hit go to proceed to tax and I'll pull up their actual bill and I'll see Mr. and Mrs. Johnson and it says, you know, uh, Hillsborough County, da, da, da. I'm like, okay, there it is. Right. So then I'll apply and they won't let you apply. That's a, another thing too. It won't let you apply if you're in the wrong County. So if I go to put a right. permanent and yes, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, so I won't totally mess it up, but I'll sit there for like 10 minutes going, why isn't this going in? And then I'm like, Oh no, you know, Cause I'll worry. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I like to fill out an NOC cause they're all different for the county. Yeah. They're pretty much all the same as far as the notice of commencement and talking about you're doing the work. But like, I've been like, Oh my gosh, I filled out for Pasco and, yeah, it's, and gave it to him and it was Pasco. You know what though? The lady, <laughs> um, the one pool permit lady, she just crosses through it and writes Pasco or right across through Hillsboro and puts her name, whatever it is. Right. You know? I, I think the form is collective as far as what yeah. it's doing. It's just putting them on notice for the Yeah. For the so work. as long as before you submit the NOC to be um, recorded, you cross through and put the right one, you're okay. Cause okay. We, yeah, and um, and then there's Simple File. Do you know Simple File? Mm -mm. Well, Simple. I don't know if this is helping you guys or not, but <laughs> Simple File. <laughs> simple Sorry, we're just file. Over here. Yeah, no, so no. Sim <laughs> so say you're having some work done at your uh, at a at um, your home, and you have an NOC, and you have to go get it recorded, but you don't have time to go to the county and record it. So there's Simple File, and it's uh, fifteen dollars. And what you do is you take your NOC it has to be notarized and you upload it through Simple File and you can put Hillsboro, you can put Pasco, you can put, you don't have to drive there, you have to, you just upload it through there. Then it takes, Hillsboro, it usually takes a day. Pasco, it usually takes four days. Pinellas, it takes like 30 minutes. So you're saying like if I was in the office and I didn't want to drive to go to, up to Pinellas? To, 
to put out to file it. Yeah. Because it's obviously I'm in Plant City. And you can't get inspections until this thing's filed, you right. know. So you could just file it through um, the simple file. So they don't mind about the fact about it being electronic because it's a wet signature with a notarization mm -hmm. or any of that? No. Do you think that all of that has changed since COVID? Yeah. Basically hit and now everything is, there's more ways to get things done yeah. electronically than we've seen before in the past. Right, exactly. So when you, you'll see when you, um, so you just scan this NOC and like, you know, the notary stamp is wet and the signatures are wet and this part's printed and I'm like, I literally, I thought the same thing, it's never going to work, but it works great. And um, like Pinellas County is like, I want to, like they're magical, they're like usually 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Right. Pa Pasco County is not magical, it's usually like four or five days to get it. But I, they come back and it saves me a trip, you know? Right. So, yeah, that'd be something that we would look into because, I mean, that's especially with gas right now. Um, yeah. The last travel, but the biggest concern I thought with that was because the document I mean, I would think you could do everything electronic now, but I guess maybe that allows for more fraudulent things yeah, to occur true. because yeah. of, you know, with the notarization, you know, and copies of things like that. But if that works, I'll definitely you know, yeah, it send works that great. information to me later because I yeah, can bring to the company and be like, hey, this will save us um, time and gas yeah. and having to, to travel to all those other counties right because you know, getting here i think it was like an hour yeah for me. yeah exactly <laughs> so this, this might have saved you money <laughs> i know we could, i could have done this at home like i know this time. why am we i can here zoom. <laughs> next time we'll zoom i guess we yeah. should do a zoom yeah no, I, like, I like cd because before it was a once a year thing and yeah that, that just, just halloween right just halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that'll save you time i'm trying to think if there's anything else to save you time but electronic plans but you have the roofing is um it's so funny, I'll tell you the story, because I, I know we gotta go break soon, but um, we went, when I went to uh, Pinellas County, and I was in there and I was, because they still will take, no one will take the, um, they only want electronic plans. But Pinellas County, you can still drop off, here's my permit application, here's the hard copy plans, right. and everything, you can hand it to them. And, um, and I was in there and I was like, I can't believe you guys are still in here doing this. And she's like, yeah, and you know what? We hate it because of roofers, because she said they'd come in here and they literally have all the um, the roofing, like it's they're all covered with tar. And like she showed me this roofer, I, it wasn't you guys, just so you guys know, but they, yeah, she showed me, though. yeah, <laughs> it wasn't you guys. So she showed me and it was all covered with tar and, and the application and everything. And I was like, this is why they want to go electronic because they hate what we do when we mess everything yeah. up. But, but we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back with more tips on um, just building permits, permitting and purchasing houses. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Jesse Walters with Charles Ruttenberg. Today, Joel Jordan is joining me from Backbone Construction and Roofing. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so we're talking about just construction and how much it's gone up and, um, you know, the three increases that you've had in 30 days and kind of going into that. And we didn't, um, I know we've touched on roofs and, you know, obviously because you do them, mm -hmm. but we're talking about uh, new construction and your new construction prices, although they've gone up, they're still fair prices. Yeah, so our custom builds right now are going for 185 a square foot, and then for additions, it's around 125 a square foot. Now again, this is yeah. today, Yeah. Um, this could all change yeah, in five think, minutes. Yeah, exactly. Everything yeah. keeps consistently going up, so um, I tell people now, and again, I guess the thing that you tell people with real estate is like, buy now because it's just going to continue to go up. I guess whenever we start to see a precedence where it's coming down, I would make the suggestion to hold off if it's going to help a client. But right, right now, I tell everyone, I'm like, 
sign now, lock the price in, we can order it from our vendor, you know, we can get all that, you know, again, same thing with like shingle colors and brands, you know, it's like yeah. trying to find those particular ones, availability, like all of that is scarce and there's, because of there's so much new construction yeah. and materials are scarce or they're just expensive. Yeah, and I feel like roof, when you're getting shopping for a roof, you're, it's time for a roof, you know what I mean? Right. You're not like, you're not like, oh, I can just wait a year until those roof prices go down. Because I know how people are with the roof. Uh, if you're shopping, your roof's either leaking or your insurance company sent you that Dear John letter or that you know, some letter, to that extent. Yeah. That letter is doing wonders for me because <laughs> I, I tell so you. So sad for my customers, <laughs> but it's great for you. Well, for me, because it's so funny how I transitioned at a time when before it was so claim driven for the roof replacements yeah. with, the, with the damage. But now it's like the carriers are getting ahead of the, yeah. the deterioration and the time where a small storm could come through and cause damage to the roof that would be claimable. Now they're like, no, like some, I, 15 years was what I've been what I've been seeing and hearing. Yeah. But just the other day, I went to someone's house and they'd gotten a 10-year letter. Oh my gosh. So I think they're even being more proactive about wow. it. There's also like I know that there's like rumors or legislation that's coming out to where they're talking about taking or trying to apply depreciation to the roofing system through right. the insurance policy. Which, you know, that's something that. I guess stay tuned because they yeah. they say that it's coming, but I don't know how that's going to affect people and what that might actually do. Because if you know, right now it's RCV, it's replacement cost value versus the actual tax value with the depreciation applied. Yeah, so um, I know, like I know it sounds funny, but on car, like say the carpet industry, so they would say this carpet's guaranteed for ten years, and and then someone would put a claim in in on the carpet, and the carpet would be three years old, and they would say, well, you have thirty percent work for wear and tear so that right. carpet could be missing literally 30 percent of what the, the the material and so i always think of roofs like the same line right you know it's you've had the roof for 10 years and it's 20 year warranty um how much of that roof is actually warrantied you know right and the, the thing is it's like how off like how many insurance carriers did you have through the 20 years to yeah. have that roof and here comes the carrier you just got two years ago yeah. now has to replace this entire roofing system. Oh, yeah, it's true. So there's things like that to think about, I guess, when they look at the legislation and yeah, how I they're going to do it. Because Avatar just totally pulled out of Florida, so it's just right. literally, I don't know. And a lot of carriers are, but yeah. I see that that trend happens ever so often because even when I got into insurance, uh, when I started my career at USAA, um, they at that time pulled out of the state of okay. Florida for writing um, homeowner policies back then, unless you had military orders. But again, since they opened up the eligibility to different things throughout the years, that's changed. Right. So I know they're probably writing more. And also if you were employed, they probably would write you. It's just everything continuously changed. I know at one point they were out, but I know that they still insure, right. like active military, things like that. Um, but a lot of the insurance companies that I've um, come in contact with people, a lot of them are just pulling out. I had one guy the other day, I felt bad for him. He had filed a claim and then the carrier, he didn't tell me who, filed bankruptcy oh, that no. same week. And he'd already paid his entire year of premiums. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, so um, he's like, I'm waiting for my check back. Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, no. I was like, oh, well, I'll hold off. I was like, because that yeah. just seems like it's going to be a little bit of a, a nightmare. And he, you know, had. Um, sought legal like counsel and stuff like that so yeah um i don't know how that's going to work for him or how that's going to play out but of course you know once he's ready we'll proceed with replacing the roof but right and you know what when we were talking about uh home like if you're purchasing a, um, a home and right now people are like it doesn't matter if it needs a roof or not i need a home i'm gonna buy this and obviously call you to get the quote but a tip for my um, buyers when they are looking around the neighborhood um, usually, especially if it's a cookie cutter neighborhood, and I hate to use that word, but it, uh, like a development. Right. You're all built around the same year. So what uh, what I would do and what I do for my clients is just say, hey, you know, let's take a second. We're about to go into this house, but let's also take a second to look backwards at the neighborhood. And you can kind of see if they're due for a roo roofing, who has the new roof across from you, beside you. And if this one doesn't look like a new roof, this one's probably up because you can kind of tell right. the street. You know, you'll go new, new, old, new, new, new tarp. Old, right. You know what I mean? Roof. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. blue tarps, yeah. Ocean of blue. So, yeah, that's kind of like the look for those blue tarps and you know it's time for a roof. But, right. yeah. But, yeah, that. Um, so, I had a question for you. So, I don't know if you remember or not, but I had a customer. They didn't, the house didn't go through. But I, you were, I think you were going on vacation or something. But I was like, oh, how much for this room addition? 
um, in downtown Newport Ritchie and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, okay, I'll get back to you. And then you just kind of gave me the square foot price, like right, right. now, um, or, or that, the 125. Um, so my question is, and you might not even know this, you're probably going to kill me for asking this. But <laughs> um, I'm trying to put you on the spot. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Let's put your seatbelt out. No, it's not that bad. Um, yeah. So it's, uh, so we're out there. And now these are on piers, those downtown, a lot of those um, downtown Newport Ritchie, which means they're on the cement block. It's a wood frame home. And so, obviously, um, it's not in a flood zone. So, when you go out there, do do you suggest, or are you guys seeing like it's the same thing with like Tampa, um, Seminole Heights, and the houses are built up. You know what I mean? They have they're all like right. basically on, on block. Do, are you guys suggesting them to go to the bottom floor and have the addition where you step down into the, or do you guys try to get keep them up or what's so a lot of that would be done through the engineer that we oh, and had then he'll out. suggest okay. yeah so we uh especially if it's any kind of addition especially i've just got into learning this with like setbacks yeah and the surveys. oh yeah yeah I know the so setbacks. you have to know where you can how far you can build i didn't i mean these are things i'm learning as i'm yeah. coming along um like how far like the driveways can be to the, yeah, from the road from the road and also from the neighbor and then the setbacks as far as like how far the home has to be from the, the road right. on all sides of the property lines. Um, but and then whether there's a well or septic, where it's located. Right. So the yeah. engineer would be the one when they come out, um, okay. they help all of that and figure out what the best um, action would be with the drawings and the plans. And then, you know, they send it to us for review and we can right. determine whether that would be the best okay. course of action. Yeah, because I, um, when I was out there, um, I could see you know, the property lines, um, you know, and, and everything like that. But I know, like, every, every again, county is different. Every count, some, some are five on the sides and, you know, um, ten on the back. Right. And then sometimes there's electrical easements. You need that survey so you could see, right. are we, you know, are we going over electrical easements? Is there stuff like that? So I understand that. Yeah, I just didn't, because um, she, she uh, one of my customers, um, Jean, she's great, but she's been looking downtown Newport Ritchie. She um, loves the whole atmosphere, loves everything about it. But every time we get out, um, she is a building question for me and obviously I'm a realtor and I want to advise but I you know right. but now I, I mean I have the basics per square foot price and I can just say it's going to be about this you know right so that's the price you can give for the for your clients that ask about that and then if they obviously want us to come out take yeah. photos and if they want to proceed then we would get the drawings and all that set up for the addition especially for custom home builds all that all right and and on your website you're going to I know the new website are you going to have kind of like is do you guys build do you guys have um just standard plans for homes or you're just custom um custom plans for each home i think it's custom for each home I'm, i know that the owner we just had a custom home build that came into the office mm -hmm. and i want to say that they came in with their idea of what they wanted it to look like and so he took from that oh, okay. created drawings and then go from there right right and then we have you know the engineer that'll come out kind of solidify those plans and then you know like they came back in they're like okay we want this window over like a little bit more right you know we want they're like oh we thought about having this bathroom here but let's just take it out let's just yeah. make this a bigger room you know we have a bathroom upstairs or something so the the plans and when you get down to the integral part of that is really when you identify those things right right and so that's good you got, you guys have the um the financing for it now too, right. it's all set up. So, I mean, this is like, you've grown, like, I mean, I, I can't yeah. remember what, it's been six months since you came yeah. on, you've so literally grown in the We have grown, uh, we did a, we've done really well, not to like brag as far as like the, the team, we've already, as far as like me and the other sales guys, I've already done over like half a million gross prof, profit sales in the first quarter of the year. That's awesome. So I'm trying to push for that continual, um, Continue, we continue to be successful in, in beating each month. I, we have, I have a standard amount of goal that I have for the team, and then we've superseded that every month That's so awesome. far. So I want to continue that same momentum um, with yes. the team. So as far as um, how are your, is your supply chain being affected? Or are you guys having a back order because of certain colors on the roofs? Things, I mean, I, honestly, when it comes to colors, like we, I mean, we we advise like this is what we have. This yeah. Is what we don't. And so if it's an emergency, pick these. If yeah. you can wait, pick. And most of the time, I've never had a, a customer was like, I have to have this particular color. Yeah. Like, and there's so many different variations of colors that kind of look the same. Similar, yeah. Similar, you know, um, that I've never had someone be like, well, I have to have this color, and I 
Yeah. And I mean, I'll tell them, okay, well, it's in California, and it'll take six weeks to get here. Right. It's going to cost this much money. You know, most of the time, they will end up, you know, choosing Take like a, from, another option. Yeah, you know? something simple. Because it is scarce with some of the with some of the brands and some of the colors. You right, know? right. Yeah, I was wondering that because I know a lot of. Um, so, um, for instance, I had to get a fence for a rental property, and the uh, the one fence it's more expensive normally. And they call it board on board. And um, so it's more expensive than this other fence, which I don't know a lot about fencing, so correct me if I'm wrong. But Yeah, and, like that's and, more expensive than like composite decking, like all that composite yeah. that people want nowadays. That's way more expensive. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, the, they ran out of the cheaper fence, so they were putting the board on board the same exact price as the other fence. So I was like, well, that's good. So then when the fence actually went out, it was a more expensive fence, so everybody was all pleased. Right. And they thought, wow, the homeowner got this more expensive fence for them but in fact it was exactly the same price <laughs> in fact i was going to do a show tell me if you think this is a good show or you guys tell me if you think this is a good show on um ways to get a bargain right now like ways to actually like i'm talking like uh like coupon type you know what i mean like not not couponing like you know the lady at Publix with the 50 right. coupons not like that like uh like for instance that the people with the fence um it was really really expensive because wood's so expensive so I told them to go on eBay and buy a 10 percent off Home Depot coupon that hadn't been used yet and then to purchase go into Home Depot with your coupon and you're going to pay 10 bucks for your coupon on eBay and go in and then you save 90 dollars now you got a coupon for your you know right. fence it saved them 90 dollars you know I mean, it, so, it sounds like a lot of work, but it really, it really wasn't. It really wasn't. It does. It's like it's ninety dollars. It's like lunch right now, right? Any, of those, the, any, any cost to save money, I think, is a great yeah uh, venture. Um, I also wanted to mention about um, they're doing. We're doing the golf. Oh yeah, yeah. Again, and that's on the website too. The golf invitation. Yeah, right? and it's going to be the same charity, the Jensen's Heart of Gold. We're going to. Um, I want to say it's in mid October. So stay tuned to the website. It'll have all the information updated. Um, I know we're, I know we had talked about doing like the shot putt before. I think we're still looking at other or oh, yeah. like other different things um, to do more charitable events. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, the, you know, well, that's on the website. Um, but the, um, and then you'll, up, you'll upload the different options or if people want to put their signs up or something yeah, like that. Like, like they'll upload sponsors. that their sponsorship and you yeah, know, yeah. If you sponsor a hole or you sponsor the lunch, like the different variations of the levels of sponsorship. Correct? Oh, okay. And then is there prizes? I was like the prizes. Yeah. They, <laughs> there's prizes. Tell me about prizes. There's, they, I think they did like a 50-50 raffle. Oh, they nice. did um, a silent auction. Um, and do you have to be there to win or no? You have to find yeah. this out. I need to know. I, 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 to know. I assume that I mean, <laughs> when we had it before, everyone was there because they all played golf and then they came back right, right. while they are having lunch. Then they um, were announcing all the winners. So Yeah. Because you buy the tickets at the time and you put them in oh, okay. whatever prizes you want. And then right. th they call the name there. So I... I, think so. I would wait around. I love the 50 I don't know. 50 raffles. I don't know who would just be like, okay, I'm going to go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, there's a, um, there's a raffle and it supports um, um, this... Basically, this it's in uh, Ohio, and it's um, it's literally a raffle. And obviously, I don't go to Ohio, but every year I play it because one of my friends won a truck, and I was I, she's super lucky. And I said, "Hey, Dee, how you doing? You want anything lately?" <laughs> she's like, "Yeah, go on." The, she tells me where to go on, and I go, "Okay." So I want a um, crossbow. <laughs> I've got like this brand new crossbow, crossbow in my. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm like, I and I basically someone already asked me if they want to buy it. I'm like, I literally have to use it at least one time, then I'll right. sell it because I can't just, you know, have this crossbow and not. But it, again, it looks like I'm kind of like a psycho because I have like this crossbow like laying in my house before. But it was, uh, you know, it says 50 50 raffles, you don't have to be there right. at 10, and then everybody um, puts in, and they usually have like bands and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, so, so that'll be the, the event they do, and then we still, um, we're still doing the roof giveaway. Um, yeah, that's really nice. So, so tell me about the roof giveaway. So that's what we do every year. I think it's in every Christmas. They give away a roof for a person locally in Plant City. Yeah. Um, that needs in need of a of a roof, and 
you just go on and nominate, again, that's on the website, you just go on and nominate um, someone locally in Plant City right. that needs a roof or a family that's in need of one. And oh, that's nice. That's what we do every year is for giving back to the immediate community. Yeah, that's City. really nice. Yeah. And then hopefully next year, we're able to get into the Strawberry Festival because I think that would be just fun to have like yeah. a booth and talk about the roofing and construction then. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different events. I know um, at, they had the Chasco, and I ran an ad at the Chasco, and then someone had a really good idea. They they um, uh, donated a bunch of cups to the local like you know uh, restaurants and bars and stuff right. in the area, and like and the um, the what are they called the cup. Cool, the coolers or whatever, the little cooler things, they did all those too. Or something. No, they're um they were just like the sleeves to like the little um cup. Cute, uh, uh, the coos- I know yeah, what koozies know what or whatever, yeah. <laughs> and they just put their names and stuff on it and I was yeah, like, Yeah, we Why have one the was our name. We have cups too that we give out to Yeah. So. so they the Chasco, so everybody's walking around with their on their uh you know what I mean, on their cups and stuff. I was like, That's brilliant. So I don't know if I'll do something like that next year. But but it would be heartbreaking to see my cup smash on the ground. <laughs> you know, we did the, <laughs> or uh, someone drawing mustaches right. on it. No, we, we did the Plant City Christmas Parade and we gave out a bunch of cups. Oh, okay. During the parade. So yeah. that was a way to give out our cups and hopefully they're not smashing away. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always have to take it down to the, you know, like <laughs> it's in someone's garbage right now. Yeah, and also the, uh, I know on the Chasco they have, I have an old Mustang and I always wanted to do the drive with the Mustang through the parade and throw beads at everybody. Right. That looks like a good fun thing for the communities too. Just different community right. stuff, you know. But yeah, that's I'm so um, I'm actually kind of proud of you right now. You got a promotion. The business has grown. Zooming. You're in charge. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are booked up. Everything's exactly. going well. We're so. booked and blessed, and I can't yeah. wait to see how the rest of uh, 2022 works out for us. And I can't yeah. wait to come back and uh, with your new staff. So yeah, if anyone, my new staff, yes. yeah. So if anybody is looking for a job, remember um, to contact him via the website on the um, inquiry part or email you. Yeah, email me at joel at backbonefl.com. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me, and um, have a great day. And everybody have a great day, and see us next week. All right, thank you.